Here we aim to introduce adding and subtracting rational functions with unlike denominators, which is substantially harder than when we have the same denominator in each term. So let's take a look here. We have 4c divided by d plus 8d divided by 5. We want to add those two together, and there are some steps for that. First step, find the least common denominator, also known as the LCD. Okay, so recall that to find the LCD, you begin with the denominator of the first rational function. So let's just do d. Okay, and then you move on to the second denominator. And you say, what do I need to add to my LCD to make sure I include the second denominator as well? Well, we have a d, but we don't have a 5, so let's add in a 5. Okay, so there we have it. There's our LCD. If we had more terms, we'd just keep doing that and doing that and doing that. So our LCD is 5d. Great. All right, next we rewrite each rational expression with the LCD as the denominator. Okay, so what that means is we're going to reach, we're going to take this thing, 4c over d plus 8d over 5. And we want to make this so that the LCD is 5d on each of these. So let's multiply this first one. We need a 5 down here. And so we multiply it by 5 over 5. Okay, why would we put a 5 on the top as well? Well, we do that because we're really just multiplying by 1, right? Some people even put a big 1 around this thing to remind us that this is just a giant 1. If we just did a 1 fifth or just a 5 in the bottom, that's multiplying by 1 fifth, which completely changes things. And we can't just go around changing equations or uh, mathematical expressions. It, it alters it. But if we just multiply by 1, that doesn't change anything. In this case, we're multiplying by a special version of 1 known as 5 over 5. That's still 1. Okay, second one, we already have the 5 in the denominator, so now we're going to multiply by d over d. Okay, so again, that's just multiplying by 1, and there's nothing wrong with multiplying by 1. So now in the denominator, we have 5d for both of them, 5d, and up top we have well, let's see, four, 4 times 5 is 20, so we have 20c plus, and then we have 8, and then d times d, so 8d squared. Okay, now, it is tempting to cancel this d down here. What I'm about to do is wrong. This is wrong. Don't cancel like that. You can't do it. Why not? Here we go. General rule for canceling. Okay. Scan the numerator and the denominator. If you see a plus or minus, I see one. That is not in parentheses. That is not in parentheses, then don't cancel. Okay, so here is a plus hanging out. It's not in parentheses, so we are not going to cancel. Thus, this is our final answer. Let's try the next one. We have 8 over x plus 4 minus 3 over 3x plus 12. First thing I'm going to do is factor where I can. Okay, so we have 8 over x plus 4, nothing happens there. Minus 3 over, look, I can factor a 3 out down here. 3 over x plus 4. There we go. Next, I find the LCD. Okay, so let's see here. We start with the first denominator. We have x plus 4. Now I look at the second one and ask, what do I need to add to make sure I completely include the second denominator? We already have the x plus 4, we need to add a 3. So I'm going to add in a 3 there. Okay, there we go. 3x plus 4. Okay, and that includes everything, so that's our LCD. All right, so next, next step, rewrite each rational expression with the LCD as the denominator. Okay, fair enough. We are missing a 3 in the denominator on the first one. We make sure and put it in the numerator as well, so that we're just multiplying by 1. That gives, um, and note that, the, that we're already okay. We're okay down here for the second one. 3x plus 4 is already there. That is our uh, least common denominator, so we're good to go. Uh, that gives us, on the bottom here, we have 3 times quantity x plus 4. And up top, we have 3 times 8, which is 24, minus 3. So that comes to... 
21 over 3 x plus 4. And look, we have some nice simplification here. Those cancel 7 x plus 4. Oops. All right. Let's try another one. Here we have 5 over y squared minus y over 2y plus 1. Okay, step one, find the least common denominator. Okay, well, I'm going to take my first denominator, add that in, y squared, and then I move on to my second denominator and say, what do I have to add into my LCD to make sure I've included my second denominator as well? Well, in the second denominator, we have 2y plus 1, so really nothing's in there, so let's go ahead and add in the whole thing, 2y plus 1. There's our LCD. Now, next step, rewrite each rational expression with the LCD as the denominator. Okay, so this is the part where we multiply by special versions of 1. So we have 5 over y squared. Okay, so we have the y squared, but we're missing 2y plus 1. I will multiply by 2y plus 1 over... 2y plus 1. All right, good to go there. So then we have minus y over 2y plus 1. Now in the second denominator, we're missing the y squared term. So I will multiply by y squared over y squared. Okay, remember, whatever you do for the denominator, you have to do it in the numerator as well. So you're just actually multiplying by 1. Let's multiply this out and see what we get. So now we have a single denominator, right? y squared times 2y plus 1. And up top we have, well, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 5 through. So 10y plus 5 minus y cubed. And you can leave it like this. Some people prefer to rearrange it so that our uh, exponents are in descending order. That's a nice Probably a slightly nicer answer here. Y cubed, negative y cubed plus 10y plus 5 over y squared over 2y plus 1. Okay, and maybe you're asking, well, shouldn't we try to factor this trinomial up here? Yes, in general, you would do that. This one does not factor, so I'll, I'll, save, I'll save us the effort of trying to factor it. But it's, it's good that you're asking that, yes, you would in general want to try to factor the numerator and see if you get any last-minute uh, simplification. 